Hey, good day, it's Prezo here, and I've been really getting into this process lately. It's called parkerizing. Now, parkerizing is a hot chemical process you can use on steel or iron, and it'll work on mild steel, carbon steel, any sort of iron, uh, anything ferric basically it'll work on. And the result that you get is, I think, fantastic. It's, it's a beautiful dark charcoal grey colour. It's corrosion resistant. It's uh, has a high capacity for absorbing oil, which makes it great for running in engine parts. So often camshafts and crankshafts are parkerized to improve its lubricity. I love that word, lubricity. Just chuck that one out at the next barbecue and see what people say. In any case, um, in the home shop, for me anyway, it's a way of introducing some degree of corrosion resistance into steel. I have a problem in my shop where the bright steel parts uh, will often corrode. Uh, they get this horrible, you know, crusty red corrosion on them and it takes forever to clean them up again. And you're forever, you know, doing maintenance on them. Now, I made uh, this part some years ago and I used a cold uh, blacking process on it and it didn't work very well and I showed this in my last video where the top of this had uh, a lot of corrosion on it and it needed to be cleaned so I've used the parkerizing process on that this is still holding up uh, I need to you know do some tests on it and just find out how long this will you know sit around the shop without getting any sort of corrosion on it now that leads me to my next point I want to do some tests to work out uh, what's the best after treatment when you've done the parkerizing process and also I want to find out how resistant it is to wear and tear so basically uh, abrasion knocks and bumps and that sort of thing oh incidentally this is a tool that I made a number of years ago it's a rib nut setting tool so it's a chrome plated 4140 carbon steel stock this just went into the parkerizing tank and it hasn't touched that chrome plating at all but I reckon that looks great. Gives it an interesting contrast. So yes, it doesn't work on stainless steel. It won't work on anything that's got chromium, nickel, cobalt, any of those sort of materials. Only iron or steel. These are just cold rolled mild steel. I've done a sort of a rough sort of polish on them and I've numbered each one. I've got six samples. So let's have a look at how we're gonna treat these. This is what I had in mind for the testing process. So in part number one, we're going to parkerize it normally, uh, but we're not going to use any sort of oil treatment on it afterwards. And we're going to add a coat of etch primer on one side. This is for a paint adhesion test over a parkerized finish. In number two, we're going to follow the, the recommended Jane Kitts process, and that is to parkerize and then use the dry touch oil on top of that. In number three, we're going to substitute WD-40 instead of the dry touch oil. Uh, for four, once again, we're gonna substitute wax for the dry touch oil. In five, we're gonna follow the normal Jane Kitts recommended process. I'm gonna keep this one for an abrasion test after uh, six weeks. And in six, we're just gonna take the cleaned, bare, uh, bright mild steel, and we're gonna add a coat of etch primer on one face. So in fact, one and six are to test for paint adhesion. These three here are for the different types of after treatment. This one is for our abrasion test. The cleaning process I use on this bare steel is just to rinse it in a product called Jane's Part Wash. This uh, came from the same company I bought all my parkerizing chemicals from. It's a, a fairly mild sort of uh, detergent, I think. I got a feeling it's, it's the same as this stuff, that simple green, except it's blue. <laughs> and I just scrub it with a toothbrush and then you do a water rinse test on it and if the water doesn't bead, you're good to go on to the next step. Now the problem with the water beading is that the same thing will happen when you put it into any of the, the other solutions like the parkerizing solution. And if that does bead up on the surface, then the parkerizing chemical is not touching the steel, it's just sitting on top of a film of wax or oil or grease. So you do have to be a little bit vigilant to get this right. So let me just rinse this one. So that's, uh, so that's pretty good. You see the water just sitting in a film on top there. Okay, so that one's done. 
we'll just move on and get them all done like that. I find that uh, this parts wash works pretty well, but if you do have a part that's particularly troublesome, uh, you can't seem to get rid of that waxy or oily film, I find that uh, just using this stuff, just the ordinary old Ajax, seems to do the trick. There's something in the Ajax that um, chemically cleans the steel, and also I think it's because it's a little bit abrasive that works really well. You still go back into the parts wash uh, to finish, and then water rinse. Okay, I'll get them all done, then we'll parkerize a lot. Next step is to go into this Metex M activator for phosphate. Once again, this came from the Jane Kitts catalog, and I believe it's an acidic process. So we're just going to let that uh, sit in there for about one and a half to two minutes. Uh, there's very fine bubbles appearing on the surface of the steel during this process, so that's what leads me to think that it's etching it in a certain uh, fashion. And then we do a water rinse, and then we're going to boil the part in clean water for about uh, a minute, and then it goes into the Parker Phosphate solution. Okay, well it's been in there two minutes, so we're going to rinse that, and we're going to go into our boiling water. So the rinse is just in clean tap water. So I'll let that sit there. That's just plain boiling tap water. And uh, I'm not sure why we do that. It could be just to bring it up to temperature before it goes into the parkerizing tank. Now my parkerizing tank here is a new one that I made. It's a stainless steel rectangular container. I built a hanging rod into the top of that so I can hang the parts rather than just sit them on the bottom of the tank. Previously I was using a, just a one litre uh, saucepan and the little eruptions there are something new. <laughs> I don't know what that's about, it just started doing that recently. So for some reason we're getting a lot of um, like heavy air bubbles building up top on the bottom and that's popping to the surface but yeah, it's a bit disconcerting. Um, I might have to make a cover for that. It keeps doing that. Alright, so our parts have been in there for about a minute. So now they go straight into the pulverizing tank. Now remember, I'm only doing parts uh, 1 through 5, and part 6 is still in the cleaner. We're just going to dry that and then put the edge primer on one side. So straight out of the boiling water, straight into the pulverizing solution. And ideally, you don't want that sitting on the bottom of the tank. Okay, well, let's have a close look at that. You see those fizzing now, and that's an indication that the parkerizing process is taking place. You'll also see the, the color appear within a few minutes. Uh, it sort of goes a gray and then a, a darker charcoal gray when it's done. And I am controlling the temperature of this in uh, the tank using a PID controller. If you want to go back and look at my previous video, you'll see how that was made and the application of it for parkerizing. But it's good, keeps the temperature you know, monitored between 94 and 96 degrees, which is the recommended range. The little uh, probe here is what we're using to sense the temperature and that feeds back to the PID controller. Okay, I'm going to do these two first. This is uh, four and three. So I'm just going to rinse these in water. All right, so number four is our wax. I'm just going to put that to one side. And three is going to be our WD-40. So. This is just still wet, and the idea is that the WD-40 is going to drive off the water and allow the oil content of the WD-40 to penetrate into that parkerized finish. So that's that one. We'll just let that sit there in the oil. Now let's uh, dry number four. I'm just going to use a hot air gun for this. I don't really want to touch it so we don't contaminate it with any of that WD-40. looking pretty dry and while that's warm I'm going to put this into 
that stuff, that's a Canuba wax or Canuba polish. Uh, I think it's got beeswax in it as well. Now, unfortunately, that's all I've got. So we just uh, have to see how that goes. It's still warm, so it's sort of melting that wax and giving it a good coverage. So the pores of that parkerized finish should have absorbed that wax fairly well. I'll give this a follow-up rub later on. This is primarily just to stop any of the flash rust occurring on it. In fact, I might just I'll leave that in there. We'll just leave that in there and we'll come back and give that a clean up later. So that's our WD-40 and our wax. So now we're going to find the one that goes in the dry touch oil. So that's number two. All right, so there's our number two. Go and put that in the oil. It's uh, sitting next door at 60 degrees and it's got to stay in there for about two minutes. Okay, this is uh, number five. This is the one we're going to do the abrasion test on. So it's going to get the same treatment in the dry touch oil. And then we'll put that one aside and that's the one we're going to try knocking around, see how durable that coating is. So the, uh, the recommended treatment for these parts after they've been parkerized is to go straight into this dry touch oil. Now it looks to me just like ordinary old um, water soluble oil. Uh, this has been heated to around about 60 degrees C and we're supposed to leave it in there for about one to two minutes and then it just comes out and it's hung to dry. So they're pretty much done now so we'll take them out, uh, let them cool down, let them dry and then you can wipe those over with the dry cloth. Okay so this is number one, this is the one we're going to just simply dry and then we're going to paint one side of it with a, an edge primer. So I'll use the hot air gun on this one just to get that uh, dried off. It's been rinsed in water and we'll just give it a, a light rub down with some paper towel before we do the paint. Alright, so I'm just cleaning this with a paper towel. I'm trying not to touch it with my fingers just so we don't compromise the, the paint adhesion on that parkerized finish. So I'm just going to put this to, to one side until we clean the other one and then we'll do all the edge primer at the same time. Okay this is the one that was in the Jane Kits cleaner. It's just been rinsed in water. It should be degreased and chemically cleaned. So we'll dry this one off and then we'll do this with the edge primer as well. Okay, let that cool down a bit and we'll give that the paint. Okay, so here's our two samples we're going to paint. So six is just straight out of the cleaner, bright mild steel, and one is the parkerized finish. And I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's got that speckly sort of um, textured finish, which should hold the paint really well. Okay, the paint that I'm using is just a super etch primer. It's a rattle can. It'll do. <laughs> In fact, it's probably a good thing to use a poor quality paint because it'll highlight any adhesion issues. So let's give these a coat. Okay, now the bright steel one dried very quickly. I think that was still warm from where I dried it with the hot air gun. The parkerized one's still a bit wet, but we'll just let this dry thoroughly. So I'm not going to touch this, in fact, for the duration of the test. So in about six weeks time we're going to have a look at these and then we're going to see how well that paint's adhered. Here are the six samples now and I've rested these on a piece of plywood. This little bit of bronze wire is just to lift each sample up off the surface to allow some air circulation around the back. They're numbered from one at this end through to six here. Each sample has been treated according to the schedule that I set out earlier and I'm going to leave these samples outside but under an awning. So the conditions are a little bit more extreme than what I would get in my workshop. They're going to be protected from direct rain, but there's, uh, you know, it's just an awning. So there's going to be sort of um, nighttime conditions that are likely to replicate that sort of moisture coalescing on the surface. So uh, I'm going to do this now. I'm off on holiday tomorrow. Uh, we'll check back in six weeks. So bon voyage. I'm leaving on a jet plane I don't know when I'll
been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. I still call Australia home. Okay, well, this is the awning where I kept these parts for the last six weeks. So let's have a look, see how they've gone. And I must say, they're looking a bit better than I thought they would, really. But let's take them inside and have a closer look. Well, here are the parts on the bench, and we're going to look at uh, parts one and six first. So we'll look at six. Now, this was the control. So this has been polished and no other treatment apart from an etch primer on this side here. And if I turn that over, you can see quite clearly the corrosion that started on that, uh, that vertical edge at least, and also where it's been touching the plywood. So obviously moisture has run down that surface there and collected on the bottom edge. You can see it on the wood here as well. And it seems like these vertical edges have fared the worst. Uh, that end's not too bad. Give you a really close look at that. And this is the sort of issue that I get in the workshop with any bright steel parts. They're always going to go like this after a, a short period of time, especially where you've been handling them and you've been getting those sort of, um, you know, acids off your fingers on the surface of the steel as well. But we'll look at the paint adhesion on this one in a minute. Number one was done with the parkerized finish, but no after treatment. So there was no wax or oil put on that. This side has also been painted and we'll come back and check the paint adhesion on that. Interestingly, on the back, it started to corrode. So it seems like you do need some sort of uh, an after treatment like the wax or the oil to fully protect that. It's nowhere near as bad as the, the bare steel part, but certainly it has started to corrode. Okay, now let's just leave aside five for a minute uh, and we'll look at two, three, and four. Now, number two is done the recommended way by Jane Kitts. That means it's had the dry touch oil and it's been immersed in that and it's still good. There's absolutely no sign of corrosion anywhere on that. So I'm quite happy with that one. Okay, three was done with WD-40 and once again, there's no sign of corrosion anywhere on that part. And four was done with a wax. And again, no sign of corrosion at all. So it seems to me, apart from the fact that the, the one that's been done with the wax has sort of got more dust stuck to it, it seems like, um, you know, it doesn't really matter what you use. And some people have uh, suggested that you should be using Cosmoline, um, you know, all sorts of suggestions about what a suitable after treatment for the parkerizing would be. But just from the basis of that test here, it seems like it doesn't really matter. Now, number five has been done also with the dry touch oil, and this is the one we're going to do the abrasion test on. But we'll come back to that later. Okay, let's have a look at these two here. These have been coated with the etch primer, and I want to see how well that paint has adhered to that surface. So this is the, the one that I've been really interested in seeing. This is, uh, we're going to check the paint adhesion on the bare steel part. And remember this was cleaned um, in, in much the same way you would do if you're preparing uh, a steel part for any sort of paint process. This one though has had the parkerized coating, so I'm interested to see how well that sticks. So the normal method for doing this is you cut through the paint coating using a, an X pattern or a cross pattern. So I'm going to cut right through to the steel substrate. We do that on both parts. And I can see the bare steel showing through the paint. And next thing we do is put a piece of masking tape on that and tear it off again. So I'll burnish that tape down quite hard. And the notion is that when you remove the tape, because of the cuts we put in the surface there, if there's any lack of adhesion, it's going to tear the paint up. So let's check this one first. This is the bare steel. Alright, interestingly, 
that is stuck quite well. Um, it's torn the paint off. Let's have a close look. It's torn the paint off in patches, but certainly it didn't take it off where that cross pattern was. And if there was any weakness there, it would have torn it up from that sharp point. Okay, let's try this one. Ah! Well, there you go. <laughs> that didn't work. Yeah. Okay, so you can see there that it has taken the paint off that. So that's interesting. Let me try this one again. Well, I don't know about you, but I'd say that etch primer on the bare seal is probably held up better than on the park rising. I don't know why it's just on the one end though, but certainly it didn't tear it up from that sharp corner in the centre. So it just seems like a lack of adhesion on one end overall. Okay, so that's interesting, isn't it? Okay, so the last thing I want to do here is just to check to see how well this uh, coating on number five resists abrasion. Now, I'm going to use a very unscientific method which involves just scraping across the bench a couple of times. And yes, it's abraded that quite easily, but to what extent, I don't know. It sort of looks like it's scratched right through to the bare steel. So, yep, not quite as durable as I had hoped for. Let me try another method. Okay, once again, not terribly scientific, but I'm going to just throw this in a container and we'll just chuck in some random hardware. And let's just give that a good shake. I reckon that simulated about two or three months of just general wear and tear. And all right, you can see once again it's nicked through the coating. Looks like it's gone through to the bare steel underneath. But you know, overall that's held up not too bad. It's nicked right through the corner there, which you know is pretty hard to stop when you're subjecting to that sort of abuse but I don't know I think it's um, as good as you're going to get from any sort of coating it wouldn't matter what that was uh, maybe a, like a hard chrome or a hard anodized coating might stand up a little bit better uh, it's not too bad so what are my conclusions well firstly with the paint adhesion on the parkerized finish it didn't hold up as well as I thought it would it hasn't completely delaminated, it's sort of pulled it off in small patches. Uh, in terms of the bare steel one, uh, same sort of result, probably better than the parkerized coating. Could be that I didn't rinse this parkerizing properly and it's left, or well, there's some sort of film being left on the surface there which has stopped the paint from adhering. But hey, I'm just making excuses. In terms of two, three, and four, uh, it didn't seem to matter what sort of after treatment we've used, they all held up equally well. Uh, five with the uh, abrasion test, um, I, you know, I don't know what I was expecting there. It's clearly damaged, uh, and I don't think any sort of coating is going to protect it from the sort of abuse that we subjected that to. Now, um, next thing, these are the tools that I did uh, some time ago, and this one's been sitting out in the workshop, and it still looks brand new. Uh, this has been you know, on the shelf there for nearly eight weeks now under the same conditions that I would normally treat all my tools and there is absolutely no sign of corrosion anywhere on that. So it's held up to that sort of period of time fairly easily. 
This is the other one. This has been sitting in a drawer though. It still feels slightly oily. And uh, once again, absolutely no sign of corrosion anywhere on that. This one, the bare steel, clearly the corrosion has started and it'll only get worse. Once that oxide coating gets going, it absorbs more moisture and that accelerates the process. So bare steel, even if it's polished, even if it's oiled, is not going to last as well as I think this parkerized coating is going to. Okay, one last thing before I wind this up. Uh, a lot of people asked in the comments about the chemical nature of this parkerizing solution. And I wasn't completely sure. Uh, I read through the book and it didn't really spell it out. So I got in touch with uh, Jane Kitts and one of the reps got back to me and he's told me that the parkerizing solution is a manganese iron phosphate coating. So I hope that clears that up for anybody who was questioning uh, what sort of process it was. The other interesting thing was that that Metex M activator, which is what I thought was a, an acid solution, and I was wondering whether that was responsible for this crystalline effect in the phosphate coating. Uh, what they told me is that the Metex M is not a phosphoric acid. It's a blend of acids that have been designed as a pretreatment metal acid activator. It is also used for different procedures when other concentration, temperatures and exposure times vary for many other metal pickles, etc. However, for the process in question, that is the parkerizing that we're doing here, it is used as a cold activator. While Metex M will change the surface appearance slightly, it is actually etching the metal. It is not what causes the crystallite-like effect on the surface of the metal after the phosphating. So there you go. The Metex M is, uh, is that just that pretreatment, but it's the actual phosphate coating that gives it that crystalline effect. So once again, I hope that's uh, of interest to a lot of people. Uh, interestingly, uh, the people from Jane Kitts said that after my last video where I demonstrated the process, they got a sudden surge in inquiries from people overseas and they were wondering why. So they actually thanked me uh, for airing the video and uh, they, that generating some interest in their products. So there you go, that's, uh, that's my little uh, test on the phosphate coating and what conclusions do I draw? I think it's going to be um, a good uh, protective treatment for a lot of the tools that I use in the workshop and it's also a nice decorative finish as well. So that's it for me and thanks for watching.